Thanks for tuning in on how to make a crow. And what I mean by that is how to take a blank like this of tempered steel that's been water jet cut, put it on a belt sander, bring it to this, which is hair shaving sharp, and ultimately make this. A full, ready to go, finished tool and sheath. So without further delay, let's get started. The first thing to do is to start putting an edge on the blank. You can see this one's been started. It's a good example. So let's go to the belt sander and get things started. What I use for the initial edge or grind is a 40 grit belt. It's aluminum oxide. It's about a medium quality, I would say. Got it from a big box store. I will be going to get better belts soon because if I plan on doing this a number of times like I do, then I'll definitely want a, a better quality belt that lasts longer. So here we go. Let's start putting an edge on. This one has not been started at all. It's still square. Eight passes each side, taking my time, don't want, to, don't want to overheat it. You can see what's starting to happen here with the edge, it's taking shape already. When I'm doing this, I'm applying, I'm applying very little pressure, let, letting the belt do the work, practicing safe tool safety and that jazz. It's not a bad idea to have some water right beside you too, so if it does yeah, yeah, become hot like this, then just give it a quick dunk, so I'm gonna go get some water. you might want to do when you're waiting for a certain edge to cool is start to work on another part of it. And that'll allow this to cool without overheating it. You'll know that you've overheated it if you see the metal change color. It'll become a, first a red and then it'll become a black.
take your time with this. Every few passes, every time you do a, a set of passes, have a look at the grind that you're creating. Try to make it as even as possible. You can tell by how far up the blade it goes. If you do overheat it somewhere, I haven't done that here to show you, but if you do, don't sweat it because you can take it past the surface or the area that you did overheat. You can grind past that and it's not like it affects the whole blade, it affects that certain area. So it can be something you can deal with if you do find that you've overheated it. For fear of boring you to death with watching all this grinding or this sanding, I'm going to spare you that. I'm just going to continue now, turn off the camera, and come back when I'm a little closer to putting the finish edge on. So it's a lot closer to the final edge that I want. Not quite there yet, but a lot closer. I wanted to show you my progress. You can see the angle here. It's coming along quite nicely. I've modified my eight passes to sometimes two, sometimes four. It really depends on how it feels. This is a more of an art than a science, guys. There's no way that I can keep an exact angle on this. It's very close, but flipping it back and forth makes it a lot closer to an exact angle anyway. Helps me to keep on track. I like to stop, like I said before, I like to stop every once in a while, take a look at it, make sure that everything's lining up, make any modifications to my grinding that I need to. Here we go. So it's a lot closer to the final edge that I want. Not quite there yet, but a lot closer. I wanted to show you my progress. You can see the angle here. It's coming along quite nicely. I've modified my eight passes to sometimes two, sometimes four. It really depends on how it feels. This is a more of an art than a science, guys. There's no way that I can keep an exact angle on this. It's very close, but Flipping it back and forth makes it a lot closer to an exact angle anyway. Helps me to keep on track. I like to stop, like I said before, I like to stop every once in a while, take a look at it, make sure that everything's lining up, make any modifications to my grinding that I need to. Here we go. There we go, really close to the finished edge or getting on the secondary edge anyway, finished with the primary edge. I don't know how well you can see this, but the metal's starting to roll over. That tells me that this surface and this surface are now becoming a point, a beveled edge, and once they're all evenly rolling, then it's time to take it to another belt level, a higher grit, and start putting the secondary edge on.
you might have seen me do a complete pass like this over the whole edge. Most of the time I'm just doing one section. This is a section, this is a section, that's a section. But I will do the overall once in a while, just like that. And that's to even out where the edges meet. You can see that there's transitions. Here, here. So going over it like that smooths it out. I'm not looking for a finished sharp edge on this. Like I said, I'm looking for a uniform rolling over of the metal on the edge. Then I can take it to the sharpening level. A few more passes and I should be there. There we go, we have uniform edge rolling over. So it's starting to roll over along all of this edge, every part of it. I'm pleased to see that. It's coming along quite nicely. It's time to take it to the next level and get the secondary edge on there. And I do that with a finer belt. So let me switch belts and I'll be back in a sec. So this is a belt that started at 120 grit. It's been used quite a bit, so it's, to me it feels closer to 20 or so, 40, whatever it might be. That's just fine, because we're done with the stock removal. Now we're putting on that edge, the final edge. There we go, that's looking great. Now we're still experiencing edge rollover, but that's fine. The next stop is the one inch belt sander, where I have higher grades of belts, as well as leather. So we're gonna strop it right on the belt. So we basically started with this. Finished up with something like this. It's very straightforward, guys, you don't need expensive, complicated equipment. It does take a little getting used to, but if you have these tools already, you've probably already got a good feel for them. Just a little trial and error. You can't go wrong. It's very straightforward, like I'm saying. If I can do it, basically anyone can. You've heard me say it before in another portion of this video, probably, but you can modify the thickness of this handle. If you have a smaller hand, like I do, I have an average size hand then this might be too thick for you. If you want to modify any of the angles, say here, you want to make this dimension not as thick, right here, you can modify all that. I made this a little oversized so that you can do some stock removal and make it exactly what you want. So let's go to the one inch belt sander. This is my one inch by 30 inch belt sander. And after I put the edge on with the four inch by 36 inch belt sander, now I put the final edge on with a 20 micron belt, a 9 micron belt, and then a leather belt with some honing compound on it. So let's start off with the 20. 
Some belts are direction specific, so if they are, they'll have an arrow on them, letting you know which way to put them on. These belts, however, are omnidirectional. It's not an issue. Of course, some morning safety wear. That took the burr off. It's rolling on there still, but that's good. It's smaller rolling. That's what I want, a progressively smaller rolling over until we get to the belt and take the burr off altogether. Finished with that belt, time to move on to the 9 micron, which is right here. Take my time. You can see there's even less rollover this time. Perfect. See there that the edge is starting? Do you see that right on the edge? So now it's time to put the leather belt on, and what that does is it deburrs and puts a mirror finish on the edge. The compound is the medium that is doing all the work, and the belt carries the compound. That mirror edge. That is now 
Hair shaving sharp. Let's see if we can get this in frame. I don't have very dark hair on my arm, so it's going to be a little hard to see, but... See that? Now let's try it on some paper. Here's some scrap paper. Let me get that in frame. Look at that. Beautiful. So little effort, just pushing it through, not even slicing back and forth side to side, just a, a push, cuts right through. There you go, that's how you put a final edge on a crow. Now, let's go make a handle. This is one of the ways that you can do handles, guys. I took some half inch ash, particularly hard, perfect for a handle. Did a rough outline. Drilled through with a quarter inch drill bit because that's the size of holes that are in the blank. And then counterboard. Now the one tip I do have is after you drill through the handle for the quarter inch hole, leave it clamped in and counterbore it while it's still clamped in from this hole. That's just a tip that I picked up. Once both holes are drilled, go to the bandsaw, cut out the shape, leave more than you need, take it to the belt sander, and add all the contours that you'd like, all the shaping, and then after that, do a light sand, use some oil of some sort. I like to use beeswax and mineral oil mixed together, it penetrates well, adds good protection to the wood. Other people use boiled linseed oil. There's a number of different ways to go about it guys, you don't even have to use wood. But I just wanted to share the basics of how to put a handle on. So there you can see I've got the handle pieces drilled out, roughed out on the bandsaw. Don't worry about how sloppy it is guys. What your prime concern is that it's actually larger than the blank itself. Now I'm going to take this to the belt sander. Every radius in here is accessible by the belt sander. And I'm going to clean it up so that it matches the, the profile and shape of the blank. And I'm also going to put contour on it, rounded edges, so that it's comfortable to hold. So you can see even there they're not lining up. But that's something that can be dealt with later. Again, it's oversized and that's how we want it. So now I'm off to the belt sander. Now that the wood handle pieces are the same shape as the blank, I can go ahead and put a contour on it. Again with the belt sander. So here you can see it's starting to take shape. I've burned it a few times. Guys, if you burn it, don't worry about it. You can sand it out. So here's the finish handle. I've taken some beeswax and rubbed it in. It's very comfortable, easy to grip, and easy to make. Now that the handle's finished, let's go make a sheath. To make the sheath, I'm using plastic from a barrel, which is really, really tough stuff. I've made sheaths with it before. What I'm doing is marking off the size I need and cutting them off on this bandsaw.
Now I have the two pieces of plastic cut out roughly. I can make the shape of the bottom of the sheath. Now that the basic shape is cut out from the plastic, it's time for me to lay out where I want to put my bolt pattern. So that I can clamp the two pieces together. Such. And then remove the excess. So I'm going to put the bolts here here one right there 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 Before I get too far along the process, this is the original plate that I drilled all the holes into. And I haven't completed drilling through this side yet. You can see I've done four though. Screws with, I'm going to put nuts on the back. Maybe leave some holes blank so that plates can be attached to the front of this with pouches, whatnot. You can see here that the sheath is starting to look like something. It's taking shape. What I like about the plastic barrel material is that it kind of cups, has a concave to it. You can see there's still some adhesive with some paper on the back. I'll be able to remove that easily by soaking it in water. There's the back of the fastener, there's the front. So I've left some holes. What I'll do is make a plate that can attach to this that has, say, molly attachments to it or whatever else I want. Or I can just leave it like that for a slim profile. I still have some belt sanding to do to finish it off. Could bring it real close to those fasteners there. There you can see it's got a much smaller profile now because it's taking away that extra stock right up to the fasteners. What I do need to do with the sheath now is to add a belt loop. This is a previous sheath I've made. Add a belt loop, some straps to hold the knife in place when it's in the sheath, and an optional pouch attachment. And the way that I'll be attaching the pouch is using this as a universal plate that anything can be, be attached to. Just bolt it onto the front of the sheath like this. Whatever you have attached to the plate, when you fasten it like this, is now part of the sheath. So this becomes removable for a lower profile. For the prototype sheath that I'm doing, I do have galvanized fasteners, of course that would be better if they were stainless or even brass or perhaps aluminum. I like the idea of having the fastener so, so that it can be taken apart for cleaning, repairs, modifications, that kind of stuff. So these are some of the components that I'll be using to add to the sheath now to make it a complete system. That'll be the belt loop. I'll put a button snap in the middle of that as well. So that'll fit on web gear, wider belts. This piece will go at the bottom just like on this sheath. You can see I have this here. We put in that on the bottom as well of the front plate. The reason I like this is because you can put paracord through it 
and t wrap it to your leg. Rather, tie it to your leg and make the sheath more secure and not bounce around as much. This is the finished sheath. It doesn't have the detachable plate on it right now. I wanted to show you the bare basics of it. This part here is removable and movable, so if you wanted to put it in a different position. It's the belt loop. I'll be putting a snap button on there as well. These are from Army Surplus, Canadian Army Surplus gear. So you can see how that works. This will actually fit onto a web belt, which is a Canadian, the older version of what the equivalent of Molly would be. So it's very lightweight sheath. This plastic is high density polyethylene, food grade came from a plastic barrel, very hard, and the fit's very nice as well. See, it's a nice friction fit. It's not jump ready without modifications, but it's in there tight. So you can see that taking an unfinished blank to the finished state is not only straightforward and doable, but it's also fun. I have a lot of fun when I make these. The first few that I made, I ground out by hand with a, an angle grinder, and that was not fun. Starting at this stage right here with the water jet blank, taking it from that stage that for me is a lot of fun. I like putting an edge on. I like making the handle. I like making custom sheath modifications. You can see this plate will screw on. Could put a pouch on there. Could put a number of things on there. Could also add that tab like you saw in the other video. Could even fasten this to the back of the sheath with the screw. So if you're thinking about it and you want to build one of these, I say go for it. I'm not the handiest of guys and for me this is a very fun project. So thanks for your interest in this project and stay tuned for more innovations like the next batch of beaks that I'll be getting.